First up on this list, no show socks. If it's hot outside and you're out walking around, your feet are going to sweat. So you want socks that absorb the sweat, protect your shoes at the same time, keep your feet as cool as possible by not going up and covering up your ankles. Now the ideal summer sock soaks up sweat protects your shoe from moisture, and doesn't cover any more of the foot than it needs to. That being said, there's one thing you got to make sure the perfect no-show sock has. That one thing, fit. You've got to get a perfect fit to make sure that these no-show socks don't slip off while you're walking. Seriously, you know what I'm talking about? If you've ever bought a pair and it didn't stick to your heel and all of a sudden started slipping down into the shoe. Un comfortable. Now, personally, I look for brands that have a silicone strip on the inside or some type of traction that adheres to your foot, but I would highly advise buying two to three different brands, one sock from each. That way you can try it. You can find, hey, what works for you and your foot. In today's video, gents, we're talking about summer essentials that every man needs, but not every man has. Next up, gents, we've got hot weather colognes. And I'm saying colognes on purpose because I'm talking a lighter concentration. Why? Because when it's hot, these things project a lot more. Now, right here, we've got one of my favorites, incredibly versatile Prada Loam Water Splash. This one right here is going to be clear, great for if it's over 100 degrees Fahrenheit. This is a solid pick. But maybe you want something a little bit more potent, something that's going to have a more citrus, grapefruit type of note to it. Check out Dolce & Gabbana's Light Blue Forever. Or maybe you want an inexpensive white floral. Check out Lacoste L1212. Or you got a little bit more money to spend. Check out Creed's Aerofa. This one is like being in the Mediterranean on a boat with melons and a bit of citrus. And gents, I want to be clear. It's not about the money. It's about getting the right notes. Notes that are clean. Notes that are clear. Notes that when mixed in with your sweat are still going to smell good. Now, this next item on the list isn't specific just to summer, but it is an item that I'm using every single day so far this summer. And that is my Esri Backpack. Now, gents, Esri is the sponsor of today's video. I've talked about him before and I love these backpacks. I mean, here's a video of me. I was just traveling over to Atlanta, seeing my friend Aaron Marino, Alpha M, and guess which backpack I took right there, the Esri backpack, because it's convenient, it's good looking, and tons of hidden pockets. They've got a hidden pocket right here on the strap. You've also got one right here, which let's see what I've got some surprises in there. Uh, my daughter, Adiana, had made for me some cool soaps, which I took with me on my trip and I've got some extra receipts. I just love pockets and they've got pockets in all the right places. They've got a nice amount of cushioning. So you don't even know when there's something in there. Internal wiring for easy charging and most importantly, plenty of room for everything you need to take, whether it be a 15 inch laptop, additional clothing. I know I carried an extra pair of shoes and the fabric. It's water resistant. It's durable. It looks good. I've taken this. I've been using this for months and it still looks new. Now, if you go over to the Esri website, you're going to see they got a variety of different styles when it comes to the backpacks. This one right here is the executive. What I like about this, if you need to pack a suit, yes, you got to put the dress shoes in there and you need room. This one is specifically designed to open so that you can put in pretty much anything there without crushing it. That being said, if you're looking for the perfect office backpack, one that can also be carried as a briefcase, you want to check out the Esri Elite. Seriously, this one can be used as both a briefcase and a backpack. And I get it. A lot of you guys don't want to just carry around a briefcase because you've got shoulder issues. Your bags get really heavy. You're putting a lot in these things and it's easier just to throw it over your shoulders. Just make sure you're not wearing your suit jacket. Pack it inside. These bags look great. They're incredibly stylish. They are versatile. They get the job done. They're very, very functional when it comes to pockets and the way that they're designed. They've been standing up to everything I've been throwing at them. They don't take stains. And these are bags that just simply are functional and they get the job done. Now, gents, to get the best deal on Esri, I want you to use that link in the description of today's video. It's going to make sure you get the best deal on the web. The next item on this list is perhaps the most underutilized item in a man's summer wardrobe, and that is summer pants. What am I talking about? I'm talking about those drawstring trousers. I'm talking about linen trousers, lightweight trousers that are cut in a way designed to keep you cool during the summer. So first up, let's talk about the tailoring. You don't want any tightness on these trousers. I'm not saying they're going to be loose, but I am saying that's the draw to the drawstring is it? it's incredibly comfortable. Now you're going to find they're made from a variety of different materials, cotton, linen, but the key here is the weave. It needs to be lightweight and it needs to be breathable. If it's going to be drawstring, this is going to be just really nice and comfortable. This is something you can wear on the beach, something you can wear around town. 
very casual with the style. Now, when it comes to linen trousers in general or tropical weight wool trousers, you also see those. Again, it comes down to don't pay as much attention to the material as to the weave. It should be a gauze weave. This is going to be a weave that allows air to transfer back and forth. Just very breathable. You see this in particular wools, lightweight wools. You see this in linen just because of the nature of the actual yarns that are used here key being is this should allow air to pass. And think about that. You've got the elegance of trousers, but you have the lightness of, in fact, some people even argue they're cooler than wearing shorts because they protect your legs from the sun, but they allow basically the air to pass. Now, dovetailing right from that summer trouser, let's talk about the summer shirt. I'm talking about the linen shirt. Now, do you need to go with 100% linen? No, you can go with a linen cotton blend, maybe even a linen with some other different materials. Point being, is you're going for something that is lightweight, that is breathable, usually going to be long sleeved with a collar. Now you can find different styles out there. Some are going to have, you know, double pockets, on, you know, it's going to be more of a safari, maybe a camp style, or you can go with epaulets on the shoulders. Rarely do you see that, but I do like it because it makes it more casual and it can build up the shoulders. Point being is this is going to be a casual shirt that is a step above anyone else wearing t-shirts. Now you may say, oh, this is going to be hot. It's long sleeve. We'll just simply roll up the sleeves, but know that that material linen and the weave is usually again going to be a gauze weave. This is a weave that allows the air to be able to move right through very lightweight. In fact, so lightweight that it may be sheer. You may be able to almost see through it. So maybe you want to wear an undershirt with something like this. That being said, you go into the pool, you throw on with those summer trousers, you got that linen shirt or maybe you even just wear that linen shirt with swim trunks. That's going to look more stylish than simply wearing a t-shirt on there. And again, it's just a great look. So many guys do not have linen shirts and you don't have to go with white. You can, there's a wide variety of different colors. You can go with a tan, you can go with a pattern shirt, you can go with maybe even a dark blue. Find what works for you. Something that's going to work with the trousers you already have in your wardrobe. And yeah, just give it a shot. Wear it to the beach, wear it to the pool. Just simply wear it out on a hot day. Next up, you're getting a two for one. Summer sweaters and summer jackets. And yes, summer sweaters are a thing. Usually made from a synthetic material or from a cotton. These are going to be ones that are actually very washable, very durable. These are also sweaters that are going to be lightweight. Again, you're not looking for anything super heavy. Probably want to avoid the heavyweight wools. That's just not the type of sweater we're talking about. We're talking about lightweight sweaters that can be packed easily. Summer sweaters are nice because they add that little bit of insulation you need when the temperature dips at night. Now, when I'm talking about summer jackets, I'm talking about lighter weight jackets, maybe made from linen, made from cotton, unlined preferably. So if you ever look on the inside of a suit jacket, you're going to see that most of them are fully lined. Unlined jackets are only going to have a bit of lining material around the shoulders and the top part of the jacket. Unlined jackets are more expensive to manufacture, hence why you don't see them as often. But an unlined jacket made from a material like hop sack or made from a linen seersucker, these are going to be incredibly breathable. It's just like having that one thin layer of material over. And again, great thing about jackets in general is they build up the shoulders, but in a situation in which everyone else is just simply wearing maybe a dress shirt, you throw on a lightweight clean polo that is made from a lightweight material with that jacket, all of a sudden you look like the man in charge. Now we talked about no-show socks at the beginning of this video, but what I didn't talk about were the shoes to wear with them. Now you can wear canvas sneakers, those are perfectly fine. You can wear leather sneakers. Again, perfectly fine. Running shoes, try to avoid that. Definitely sandals, okay. You know, if you're heading to the beach, if you're going to be slipping them on and off at the pool. But I think so many men could use a great pair of loafers, summer loafers, lightweight loafers, a lighter color. In general, something that's going to just, it's relatively cool during the summer and it really steps up your style. You wear this even with a pair of shorts and let's say a linen shirt or even a, you know, a simple black t-shirt right here, a lot more stylish than, yeah, just wearing those running shoes. That being said, you can have fun with the shoes. I didn't change the style, but I did change the material. We went with a gray suede. Right here, go with a simple, again, shorts, shirt combination, but the shoes are going to be doing the talking and are going to be getting the compliments. Now, some of you guys may be asking, well, what's the difference between a loafer and a moccasin? Well, the big thing is going to be the construction. So, on a moccasin, we see right here in the front part of the shoe, the vamp, that it is stitched right up here at the top. In addition, moccasins are not going to have the same structure that we normally see in a regularly constructed shoe. In particular, the sole, and in this case, is pretty much non-existent. You've just 
just got leather that goes right there at the base. That being said, there are moccasins out there that do have more of the traditional shoe construction, which I would recommend versus driving moccasins because these right here are just going to be better for walking around town. Not that they're going to give you a whole lot more traction, but they are going to be able to stand up to basically putting miles on these versus that other style, which will actually tear into the leather. Now, you are going to see some type of loafers and shoes that draw attention to themselves with bits of metal buckles, and in this case, a horse bit. This is based off of the classic Gucci design, the horse bit loafer, and uh, this one right here. You're going to see it in silver. You're going to see it in gold. Now, notice the material here. We've got a perforated leather. I've mentioned this before, but perforated leathers are really nice be incredible breathable. Make sure though to still wear no-show socks because if you don't wear socks with shoes like this, yes, initially it may feel fine, but over time you can actually make the shoes start to smell and they won't last as long. And let's address the issue of summer shoes and longevity. Do I think that summer shoes need to last 20 to 30 years? No. I do talk about that with classic menswear shoes that you should buy once and buy high quality and then take care of it. But when it comes to summer shoes, you know, if you can find something for 25 bucks, like I found these over in Ukraine made from a perforated leather and yes, they're glued together and the sole is eventually going to give out. These won't be able to be saved after I wear them into the ground. But you know what? I'm going to get a few seasons out of them and they were relatively inexpensive. You'll find other shoes like Espergils out there, sometimes 20 bucks for a good looking pair. You know, if you really like them, grab them and enjoy them for that season or two. Now, what about watches? Well, on this list, I'm going to put a particular type of watch. I'm going to put a dive watch. Why? Because in general, we're talking watches that can go down below 100 meters, 200 meters in the case of all the watches I have right here, and they don't cost a whole lot of money. Yes, I know there are expensive dive watches from Rolex and from Tudor and some of the other, you know, many companies out there that cost thousands of bucks, but honestly, if you go out there, Seiko, you want to spend a few hundred bucks, you can find a great watch. If you want to spend a couple hundred, maybe look at Orient. I've got this one right here. Yes, it's a fancy one from Timex with Todd Snyder, but I believe it just cost just over a hundred bucks. A really simple, clean, dive watch that, yes, it's not waterproof, but it is very much water resistant. Cause let's just say if you're down at 200 meters, yeah, you're probably not coming back up. This is a watch that you're going to be able to dive into the pool. You're going to be able to just get wet all summer and not have to worry about. In addition, if you get a simple, clean dive watch with a metal band, this is something you can dress it up. You can dress it down. I know that I wear my dive watches even with suits. I know I've said rules that probably I shouldn't be doing it, but I do anyway, cause I just love them. Next up on this list, we've got the hat. This hat in particular, a Panama, but how to wear a hat during the summer? What are your different options? Guys, I've got you covered in this video right here, where I go into a lot more detail about the different types of hats that you should look at this summer, how to wear them, how to start wearing a hat. Guys, I've got you covered in this video. Boom, right here. Go check it out. It's a good one.